Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are well. Uh, this afternoon, I am joined by the lovely Nick Turner, who is Executive Director of Customer Services and Communities at Believe Housing. Nick, how are you? Not very, um, not too bad at all. Um, enjoying the sunshine. Had a brief cup of coffee outside and then um, obviously joined you for your um, interview. Yes. Um, so the reason for this video is over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking to senior professionals all up and down the country. Uh, Nick has sadly joined the short straw today and is going to be first up for some questioning. Uh, nothing too intrusive. Um, but uh, Nick, more importantly, obviously, I've introduced you, but tell us a little bit more about what you know, you, you, yeah, can words up, you in the sector and kind of what it is you do with Believe and give us a bit more insight. Certainly. So I'm the Executive Director of Communities and Customer Services at Believe and we're based in the North East for those of the, um, that don't know of us. We've got about 18,000 properties, give or take one or two, and we're spread across 862 square miles. So a big geographical spread, everything from Seam, which is um, on the coast, absolutely um, beautiful little village, all the way up to Weirhead in the Dales, which is one of the last little villages before you move into Cumbria. Um, Believe was actually formed um, April time in 2019, so we should have been celebrating um, what would have been our first birthday um, just um, after we went into lockdown. As you can imagine, we put the celebrations on hold as it didn't really feel right or appropriate and we couldn't give it the kind of kudos that we wanted, so the fingers crossed and um, we're hoping to have a bit more of a belated birthday party later in the year when we can all come together and celebrate what we've done over the last 12 months. And it's on that last 12 months, I guess, is around my first question, because obviously we've had a few conversations before this call. Um, and one of them is around how you've been very, very proactive with the flexible working, getting the right IT systems in place. Um, how have you kind of reacted to you know, the current situation with COVID and the lockdown? Um, you know, how have you found the flexible working, having put those measures in place? And also how are the gang and the team reacting to you know, being working at home, you know, I can appreciate there's team meetings, yeah. Zoom meetings, but what are your thoughts on that, I guess? I suppose we were fortunate um, that we had been pilot piloting Agile working around about 12, 18 months prior. So we'd done a number of pilots and then we'd started to roll it out. So um, beginning of this year, we had gone um, in principle to um, the new Believe way of working, which was fully Agile. So as lockdown kind of loomed, we were able to, I would say 95% of our staff were able to seamlessly transition to working from home. The only issue we had initially was our contact centre. We didn't have remote working for them, but thankfully we, we did have a project um, to put them onto remote working that did last a number of months. Um, but the team were amazing across the business and they um, had our contact centre working from home within a week, which was just phenomenal. Um, so we had, our staff working fully from home and um, yeah. apart from obviously we had some frontline key workers around about 80 people that uh, across from various different um directorates that still had to be out in our communities and keeping our um, customers safe so it's it's been difficult um um whilst also being amazing yeah. i think that what it's done is it's strengthened our bonds together we really um solidified our relationships shown what we're capable of all and um, when we all come together and people have really been supportive and generous with their time and their effort with one another and it's been really amazing to watch all the hard work and all the fun stuff as well that's been happening yeah is that like quizzes and you name it. socials and stupid hats yeah i can imagine so <laughs> we've had everything from bingos to bake-offs to uh, various different competitions and um, one of my colleagues is a yoga instructor, so she's been taking us all through yoga. Um, we've had more personal stuff uh, where people have done Day in the Life of, yep. which has really been incredibly powerful and quite hard hitting, listening to um, some of the things that our staff have been doing out in the communities. Yeah. Um, of course, it was Mental Health Week last week, so we did a lot of stuff internally to ensure that our staff still feel supported because it's kind of we're a number of weeks in now aren't we initially there was that buzz there was that hope there was that, a lot of things to do in the first yeah. couple of weeks but as we move forward we mental health week was really important for us to really solidify that we were here for each other that people could reach out that they could pick up the phone or they could drop an email and, and someone would help help them yeah, and I think that's a really important thing because, you know, we're the same in our industry, you know, Greenacres is a small business, 
Uh, but I always feel that, yeah, we always talk about professional stuff of what's going on, how we're working with our clients. But sometimes it's just nice to call up a colleague and have a brew, not talk about work for five to 10 minutes, talk about, you know, for me, how much I'm missing rugby right now, how much I'm just missing, you know, I'm an out and about type of guy, as you know, you know, covering the entirety of the North. So, yeah, I think, and also, like you say, working with your tenants on the mental health stuff. So if they're feeling isolated, just how can you communicate and contact them as well and bring them into the fold and make them feel like they've got someone to talk to at all times? We've uh, made over 15,000 calls to our customers wow. where we've actually reached our customer at the other end of the line and spoken to them and just generally for a chat, how are you doing? Is there anything we can do to help? There's obviously the formal side that need um, help with referring to, into other agencies, but the informal side of let's just have a chat. Are you okay? How are you getting on? Are you managing, out, managing to get your shopping in? Things like that. And at the end of every one of those calls, we asked, if, asked our customers if they wanted us to ring again. And some of them we ran week on week on week um, and really strengthened the bonds with our customers. And probably some people that you might not have spoken to as much before who are now more engaged. And uh, Yeah, that's the ultimate goal within the industry, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's bringing not just our staff together, but us together with our customers, a real sense of community. Yeah, no, definitely. And that kind of the way we've been speaking actually leads me on to my second question. And I guess the word uncertainty and what does that look like in the housing industry in the next 12 to 18 months? And, um, you know, my role as well is kind of speaking with my clients and contacts and everybody in the, under the sun in the industry. And that, you know, what keeps them up at night in terms of where do they think the pressures will be? Mm -hmm. But not just, you know, you know, dwelling on the doom and gloom. Where do we see the positives as well coming through? Because, like you say, some of the stuff that's happened in lockdown has been amazing. You see all these great stories. Um, so, yeah, let's start. Let's get the negatives as, uh, per se out of the way first and then let's move on to the positive. So where do you see the challenges let's, um, over the next kind of 12 to 18 months? I if there are any at all. For me, I think yeah. um, to start with, it's that we are um, as a sector taking stock mm -hmm. um, and, and as an organisation. And I think that um, that's right because society's kind of taking stock as well yeah. about we don't want there's all this talk about the normal and returning to normal and I think there's also a want of not to necessarily turn to what normal was and what do we want the new normal to be what do we want the future to be do we want it to be different and um, what is really important to us to our customers to society so I think that that's the it's it's a challenge but it's not a negative challenge it, we, but we must do it we must really think about what's important and move forward with that because we don't want to go back into the old habits that weren't the good habits yeah <laughs> um, what's important for us and what we um, really want to focus on is our customers so what is important to them I was fortunate to be on a team's call or a team's meeting with a number of our customers and um, last Friday which was fabulous and what was really insightful is that what is important to them has changed and evolved um, and is different from where they were so we need to make sure that we understand what is important to our customers, not what's important to us. And once we've clarified that, we need to be able to respond. And whether that's switching on services or switching them off or um, making sure that they're more lean, we need to make sure that we respond to what customers want now because things have moved on. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, the world will never be the same post pandemic, whenever we, you know, it all relatively normal goes back per se. Uh, so I think, yeah, looking at what the challenges are at the moment and then using it almost as an adaptive tool to get forward and yeah. get, you know, like say streamlined or, you know, cutting services off or making new services. So absolutely, I completely agree on that one. Uh, yeah. And I suppose you've almost answered the positivity side then. So it's about analysing what's bad at the moment and then taking it forward and making it a positive and a plus point as well. Yeah, and being able to respond as customers face new challenges as we move forward. I think we're naive if we think that we've seen the full impact yeah. of the pandemic um, and some further challenges for our customers will and our communities will play out over the coming mon months, whether that's being um, worried about losing your home or losing your job or the, the struggles are going to be really difficult and we need to be able to support people as they move through the coming months and not just end now whether it be yeah. ending the calls or ending the support it's got to continue if we're going to move forward with our communities 
I think so too. And yeah, and I think that a lot of housing associations are adapting to that now. I think the initial shock of pandemic was, oh my God, what do we do? What do we do? You know, you saw 18 month IT transformation projects forced <laughs> into two weeks to get everybody with a laptop and a phone. Uh, but I think it's actually been a positive because it's pushed a lot of people forward, obviously not just yourselves, I believe, but the whole industry. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a, a plus point as well. And it will only ultimately serve the customer better as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. I'm excited to see what we could deliver for our customers. I think that um, our staff are receptive to change now. Um, I think everyone's receptive to change now, um, receptive to try new ideas, new ways of working. Innovation is really starting to come to life, I think, in our sector where it's kind of been a bit piecemeal at times. Now, people are really thinking outside the box, what can we do differently? For example, we did our, last week we did our own um, first virtual leadership conference, which is where um, myself and other members of the senior leadership team yeah. delivered our corporate plan, Excellent. brought the vision to life, we played games of blockbuster and culture wheels with all of our staff, and and we never envisaged us delivering our corporate plan that way, but it, the feedback's been excellent. <laughs> And people obviously really enjoyed it and bought in because uh, another thing I've also found on that is that housing associations are almost talking to each other again for the first time in years. So, like you said, there's that collaborative working, there's teams calls, there's, uh, you know, sharing ideas going on. So, yeah, there are a lot of positives to come out of it. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's all going to be, you know, hunky dory as the time, as you know, as we go on. But like you say, if the people just keep positive and use the learns from this, then they're going to be in good stead moving forwards. Yeah, I think that there's an opportunity for us to really take a seismic leap forward as a sector and really start to deliver really interesting, innovative ways of um, delivering our services to our customers and, and really respond to the, what they want and what their needs are. What personal stuff have you been up to, I guess, as well? You know, are you enjoying lockdown? Are you having a beer every night? Uh, you know, I think, you know, I spoke to somebody the other day and they said, you know, they're on a glass of wine for the first three weeks and realised I'm turning into an alcoholic here. So, um, you know, how you know, how, you know, how are you personally coping with as well? Because it's important to obviously understand the role, but also you as the individual as well. Well, I think um, like many others out there, I appreciate I'm not alone. I have been... Um, failing miserably at um, combining um, homeworking and homeschooling. Mm -hmm. um, two don't mix, um, like oil and water, really don't yeah. work at all. Um, and having the reality check of how difficult it is trying to teach um, uh, five-year-old things like additions and subtraction or yeah. how to write their name. <laughs> so I think that's been, um, I think you um, lower your standards somewhat when you have to combine those two. Um, and you've got to laugh about it. <laughs> I so I too. Yeah, I can imagine have stories that. to tell down the pub, won't we? <laughs> I, know, I don't. I don't have any children myself, but I can only imagine the struggles that parents are going through up and down the country right now. A, trying to keep them engaged, and B, uh, at all levels. So whether it's uh, you know children running a mock or, or grumpy teens who don't want to do anything. So I think you start off with um, you're going to have a, a timetable of lessons, and we're going to do arts and crafts in the afternoon, and you have you have aspirations to be this um, tremendous mother and teacher, and then. Um, by Friday, I was just frantically ordering Switch games off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, thank you very much for your time. And you. uh, we will obviously uh, keep in touch and uh, look out for the video posting in a few weeks. Excellent. Thank you very much. Take care.